Hi, my name is Tony Kovach, and I'm the artist in residence here at Liberty Bellows in Philadelphia. I want to welcome you back to our series of instructional videos for the piano accordion. This is the first lesson of our new unit, How to Play a 120 Bass Accordion. This five lesson unit is going to focus on playing jazz harmonies in both the right and left hand. The songs that we apply these techniques to will range from tango to jazz to musette. At this point in the series, we assume that you have a foundational knowledge of major and minor keys, scales, and chords. Each lesson is going to provide you with a serious repertoire piece one that will require persistence and practice to master. We do in fact encourage you to watch each lesson several times, take notes, slow down in YouTube, and rewatch. Today's goal is to learn how to play minor seventh chords and to apply this new knowledge to our song of the day, Honeysuckle Rose. First, let's review what we mean by the term seventh chord. In previous units, we played a chord we called the seventh chord, which is shorthand for a dominant seventh chord. To spell a dominant seventh chord, you create a major triad and then add a fourth note, a minor third above the fifth. So for example, here's a C major triad, and then we're going to add our fourth note three half steps above the G. One, two, three. That's a B flat. Let's see if we can spell a G dominant seventh chord. So we need our G major triad, and then we're going to add our fourth note three half steps above the D. One, two, three. To turn this into a minor 7th chord, all you do is make the triad minor. Therefore, the definition of a minor 7th chord is a minor triad with a 4th note added 3 half steps above the 5th. So instead of a major triad, we turn it minor by lowering the 3rd, which is B to B flat. Whereas we have a very convenient arrangement for playing dominant 7th chords, a designated button in each row, there is no such button for the minor 7th chord. One solution is to give up trying to play a minor 7th chord in the left hand altogether and play a simpler minor triad instead, while compensating by voicing the F somewhere in the right hand. But a more creative option is to combine buttons across rows to get the spelling that we want. So let's break our G minor 7 chord apart. Let's assume we will play the G with a bass button. That leaves us with a B flat, D, and F which just so happens to spell a B-flat major chord. So that means that theoretically we could play a G bass button with a B-flat major chord on top. So find your B-flat major chord. Let's play that with our pinky. And let's play our G with our third finger so that that reach is less uncomfortable. So now we found a solution for playing G minor seven in the left hand. But there might be other times when your hand is lower in the buttons and you may not be able to reach that chord. So there's another option. You could play G in the counter bass. G is the counter bass of the E flat row. So find your G and then find your B flat major chord. So now we have two options for this chord. We can play it with the G fundamental bass or we can play it with G counter bass. The chord voicing that you choose depends on the placement of other chords in the song. The chord progression for today's song consists of long passages where we alternate between G minor 7 and C7. Let's try both and see which one is a better fit. Let's try it with G fundamental bass. Let's try it with G counter bass. In my opinion, for this particular tune, it's a lot easier to use the G fundamental voicing. Today, let's start with the left hand accompaniment. The first four measures of the song have the same chords. Each measure starts with two beats of G minor 7, and then two beats of C7. I'm using my pinky and middle finger for G minor 7, and my ring and index finger for C7. So we're going to do that four times. Two, three, four. Then we're going to play two beats of F, two beats of F7 with A in the bass, A is the counter bass of F, two beats of B flat, and two beats of C7, before returning back to F for four beats. At this point, we're going to hold a single A bass note for two beats, and then a single D for two beats. Both of those are counter bass. So here's everything we have so far, G minor seven, C7, G minor 7, C7, G minor 7, C7, G minor 7, C7, F, F7 with A, B flat, C7, F. Single A, single D. 
The next phrase has the exact same progression except for the last two measures. At this point we're going to play two beats of F, two beats of C7, and then four beats of F to finish that section. In the B section of the song, we're going to hold each chord for two full measures. That's going to be eight chunks each. The first one is F7, then B flat, then G7, C7. And the last section of the song is identical to the A section, except for that last measure. So that's going to be G minor 7, C7, G minor 7, C7, G minor 7, C7, G minor 7, C7, F, F7 with A, B flat, C7, and then we hold F for eight chunks. So let's talk right hand. Even though we're starting with a G minor 7, the song is actually an F major. So let's review that scale. That's going to be F to F with a B flat. The opening motif of the song is going to be C, B flat, D, F, and A. Then we're going to play a bluesy A flat in descent. Here that is again. Then we play the A with our fourth finger and descend again. The whole first phrase sounds like this. And then for the turnaround, we're going to play an A minor chord, C, E, A. And then a D7 chord, C, F sharp, A. So that will sound like this. That corresponds with when we play the single bass notes A and D. The melody for the second section of the song is identical to what we just played, except for that A minor and D7 chord. The B section of the song has a lot of chromatic color tones that are not included in the scale. You're going to start with your thumb on F. That was F, G, A flat, and A natural. Then we're going to shift up and put our second finger on B flat. Notice the D flat. The next phrase is similar to the first one, but we start on G. And the last phrase is nearly identical to the second phrase, but we start on C. Here's the entire B section. And the last phrase of the song is identical to the first phrase. Join us next time as we add yet another chord to our vocabulary, the half-diminished seventh chord. Thanks for watching.